YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back in game two of the uh, finals for the beta flash tournament. If you've not watched game one and you would like to watch it without something being given away, then go back uh, to the previous video I made and you'll be able to see it. This is game two, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and state that Panda Warrior won game one. If he wins this one, then he will take the tournament. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Diplomat will need to take a win here in order to keep things going. So Diplomat has chosen to play as the Visigoths, and let's take a look at his Visigothic army. Uh, I did it last time from the uh, tactical map, but I'm going to avoid that this time since I didn't control it very well. Looks like I'm going to see six Germanic horsemen from Diplomat, and that's a solid choice. Uh, the Germanic horsemen, they are, a, they are a heavy melee cap for a low price, and the fact that they come with 247 health means that upgrades on these units are very viable. Um, so really, the Germanic Horsemen are probably the most viable cab unit of the game because you can upgrade them to basically whatever you need them to be. The reason why upgrades don't work on some units is because they will have low armor or uh, low health um, or something like that that pretty much, uh, or a lower mass. Things that can't be changed with upgrades and that's why upgrading them may not be such a good plan, but the Germanic Horseman kind of has all those right ingredients to be a unit that's good to upgrade. His general here is a gothic general, which is a very capable um, heavy melee cav here. I can't remember if these guys are good versus other cavalry as well. Um, I'll have to look that up at some point. Um, I'm not real good with which general units are good at what yet. He's got a gothic warband uh, over here, and it looks like three more on his other flank. So four gothic warband. There's a noble germanic swordsman. Uh, looks like four germanic warband in the center, which are the single-handed axes. These are very risky units um, because they don't tend to have good health or armor and they're not bad offensively but they're not great. Uh, he is protecting them with pikes which I like. He's got a single Germanic hunter here um, for skirmishing and that is the army of diplomats. He's got one more noble Germanic swordsman over here. So a couple of units that are a little tankier, uh, lots of offensive units and then lots of cavalry. So his army here is very aggressive. If we take a look over here at Panda, um, he's going to have up front uh, four Protectores Domestici, uh, just a, a sturdy infantry unit, no javelins with them, but sturdy. And then behind them, he's got, let's see, looks like six uh, Armigeri Defensores. These are very nice uh, units. They have a nice mix of tanky and offensive. Uh, again, no, no javelins or darts. Uh, Magister Militum General, two Fundatores, which are Slingers, three Cataphractari, and then back here, four Scoli Palatini. Um, so let's go ahead and hit play. So both these armies looking pretty rushy. Um, the, I mean, the Fundatores don't... Now, I say that. The Fundatores normally wouldn't be able to do much, say, against a, a well-armored and shielded faction, but units like these uh, noble, or not the noble Germanic swords, these uh, Germanic warband would want to be careful. I don't know how good their missile block chance is. Uh, the pikes would also be very vulnerable to the Fundatores, so uh, there are some units on the field that the Fundatores could do well against. Um, they also do well against shock cavalry and any melee cab that doesn't have a very good block chance, though I do think Germanic horsemen have a decent block chance. Um, so, anyway, the, the skirmishing advantage definitely going to go to Panda. He's got two of the, the slingers. Um, infantry, uh, or cavalry advantage, I would definitely give to uh, Diplomat. And infantry, I don't want to give anybody an advantage because I kind of just think it depends on how it gets used. Both of them have a lot of infantry. I do believe the Roman infantry is going to be a lot more sturdy. Uh, but offensively speaking, Diplomat has some units that are more capable. Uh, these Cataphractari are going to be interesting. Uh, Scoli Palatini are not a heavy cab, they're a medium cab, which is one of their main downfalls. If they were a heavy cab, they would be quite good. Um, now this does mean that their, I mean their speed's not even really all that great. you got a heavy cab over here that's only a smidge slower. Um, I'd almost like it maybe if these units were a little faster, if you're going to make them medium, because they lose out on the charge to a heavier unit of similar stats. Um, and if you look, only 219 health, whereas these cheaper Germanic horse went all the way up to 247. Uh, so Germanic horse right now are, to be honest, they're a little too good for the price. Um, you should definitely use them because they're a good unit. They're not, like, I wouldn't say they're OP like Tagmata, but, I mean, they are, they're pretty darn good. They need to be adjusted a little, in my opinion. 
Uh, I feel like you get a little too much bang for your buck out of them. I'm, I'm okay with units like this whenever it's like a single faction that has them and it kind of helps them create a faction identity, but multiple factions have uh, access to it. Um, so it's, it's kind of weird. And, and I'd be okay with Tagmata Cav being as good as they were if they were like hard capped to two units and that's the East Romans like, you know, faction identity unit. Now if you look here, Panda gets more aggressive with his charges and Diplomat tries to counter him. But when you're trying to charge through your own lines to counter, it never goes well. And the Skolai Palatini get a lot of kills, uh, whereas the Cavalry of Diplomat gets almost no kills. Um, and so this is going to create a very favorable engagement. Uh, these Armagiri Defensores are going to do very well uh, in combat. Uh, these Gothic Warband didn't get a proper charge, so... And then check this out, nice defensive position over here uh, from Panda. Just hold Diplomat's flank over here uh, while he wins over here. So. So Panda is, is really doing well uh, on his right flank right now. And Diplomat is trying to get ahead, but I mean, stuff like, oh gosh, the Cataphractari into these Germanic Warband. You can see him just rolling over in the background. That's going to be an ugly, ugly charge, and these guys are gone from that single charge. These units over here are in a, uh, in a type of Testudo. Yeah, attacking Testudo, I think, here. And... Um, you can see they're going to hold up well against cavalry and infantry, and, and that's all he's using them for is to hold. And the Magister Militum, again, is just a holding force. Uh, Panda is going to potentially be wrapping up, but right here, very nice charge from Diplomat. Gothic General into the Skolai Poatani. Um, just a very good charge into an immobile unit. Uh, Panda is starting to break through. These cavalry, um, these Germanic horsemen, really don't need to be staying in this fight. But I don't know what kind of options he has, because some of his infantry is already broken. Um, so he's probably just doing whatever he can at this point. Germanic Horseman coming in here uh, against the uh, Magister Militum. Very nice work by Diplomat, though his infantry is already wavering. His Gothic Warband over here. So the, the more sturdy uh, Romans in the uh, attacking Testudo held up very well there. His axe is in the center, getting hit by Cataphractari and um, just not really being able to be uh, effective versus the Protectoris Domestici. Um, got a breakthrough of some Skolai here, and they're chasing after this Germanic Horseman. That's still going to be a close fight, and the Germanic Horseman might win it because they just got the charge. Infantry and cavalry chasing after the Gothic General. This fight is definitely looking good for Panda at the moment. And again, it, it really comes down to the fact that he just he got the right charges early on. And I, and I find that more and more from a competitive standpoint, Attila has a lot to do with that. And I'm not trying to run down Diplomat. He's world's better player than I am. I have the same problem when I go on, and when I've lost a match, it's most likely because of the same thing. I, I've let my opponent get some better charges, um, and uh, it doesn't take much. Uh, so yeah, I, he brought a, a, I thought, in reality, he brought a pretty nice uh, Visigoth build from, from what I see. I like the Germanic Cav being there. The only thing that I would question, and I could be very wrong, but the, um, the axes were a little bit odd to me. Um, I see how they could potentially do good against the lower attack Roman infantry, uh, but with their lower health and morale and stuff, I'd just be very worried um, that they wouldn't be able to hack through in time. Um, so anyway, again though, I, like I said, I don't know for sure. That just just be my guess. Uh, great great games played by Diplomat and Panda. It was very fun to watch. It's, it's always enjoyable for me to watch these two players, uh, and lots of others, of course. But I, I enjoy watching these two. They they both seem to have an interesting. Uh, gameplay style, and it seems like I'm always learning a little bit of something by watching it. So congratulations to Panda Warrior. I believe he takes the Beta Flash tournament. And uh, congratulations to Diplomat for uh, getting to the finals and playing well there as well. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, I can bring you more uh, tournament battles. I'm sure that I'll have an opportunity to, to show you some more uh, if you want to see it. And then, of course, I'll be bringing you some of my own replays as well. So Air of Carthage, signing off for now.